Visit Elmhurst.org to explore the new City of Elmhurst website. Find out the latest Elmhurst news, pay utility bills and parking tickets, report concerns, and much more. Elmhurst.org is an ideal way to discover what Elmhurst offers your business, your family, your life. Have you visited the Elmhurst Public Library lately? The Kids Library is a wonderful place, especially with our many exciting children's programs. The second floor is home to the adult and teen collections. From research to magazines, we've got it. We have more than 80 computers throughout the building. Or bring your own laptop. The entire building has wireless access. Need a quiet place to study? Try our silent study rooms. Book one of our spacious meeting rooms for your group. Our convenient book drop and drive up window make picking up and returning library materials a breeze. And don't forget, EPL is open 24-7 online at elmhurstpubliclibrary.org. Welcome to Elmhurst Now. I'm Ken Bartels, your host, and tonight we're talking about men's basketball in Elmhurst at Elmhurst College and at York High School. And to do that, we have the two head coaches of the two very fine programs, John Baines from Elmhurst College and Vince Doran from the Elmhurst Dukes, the York Dukes of Elmhurst. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to Elmhurst Now. And let's get started with letting our audience know a little bit about the two of you. And Vince, we'll start with you. Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to high school? And I know you went to Elmhurst College, so how that decision got made. Sure. Uh, thanks for having us, Ken. I uh, grew up in the area, Glendale Heights, just uh, a little north and west of here. Wound up uh, going to Elmhurst College and met a person named Jim Weitzel who really uh, did a great job recruiting uh, me as a player and then fell in love with the school. Um, came there from Driscoll Catholic and uh, it was a great experience. I, uh, developed lifelong relationships and still maintain uh, so many great friends from the, from the college and the people that were involved there, from professors to people that just attended our games. So it was an outstanding experience for me. John, I know you wound at, up at Illinois Wesleyan. How did that happen? Well, I'd, uh, I grew up downstate and I grew up down and uh, went to U High and played down there. So I stayed close to home and, uh, and had, had a Great time at Illinois Wesleyan. Uh, when Mark Shear was the coach at Elmhurst, I, uh, he called me up about when I was 23 years old, and I was totally unqualified for the position, but uh, he still brought me up. And so I was at Elmhurst for uh, 10 years as an assistant. So that's how I made my way up. Let's, uh, let's continue down memory, memory lane just for a minute and, and talk about the respective collegiate careers. I know you, John, at Illinois Wesleyan played on a national championship team. No. Uh, what year was that, that again? That was 1997, and I was a role player. I had very little to do with it, <laughs> but uh, I was there. I was there in great support. But uh, no, I, uh, we had a good run there. It was uh, we played in a couple Final Fours, and um, I had some really good teammates, and I played for a great coach and Denny Bridges at the time, and uh, it really, I think, more than anything, solidified my idea of being a a coach because you know that was such a great experience for me you kind of just feel like you want to pass it along to other players what's a national championship game feel like well you know you it was interesting we played in the final four two years in a row and it's so funny the first time around you're you're nervous you've never been there you don't know what to expect and i really believe and, and we got third that year my sophomore year that my junior year I feel like you kind of have all the jitters and all that kind of thing behind you, and then you're really focused on winning a basketball game like you should be. Um, but the first time around, it's just really difficult, you know. And so uh, that junior year was really special to me because we really got off the plane with a different mentality than we did the year before. Vince, a little bit different story at, at Elmhurst. You arrive as a, as a freshman. You start all four years at least for a time you'd played in more varsity games than any player in Elmhurst history and your name's all over the record books 
But in 1992, you too did something with the NCAA that had never happened at Elmhurst. I can't imagine what it was like to win a national championship. Our, our highlight was getting into the tournament. We were the, the first uh, team in the history of the school to make the NCAA tournament. It was so exciting. I still remember it like it was yesterday, remembering because we were on the bubble to get in. Uh, fortunately, got in and, and won a game and wound up losing the second round down at Wesleyan. So um, <laughs> it, it was a tremendous experience. And again, just something that uh, basketball memory that uh, will stay with me forever. It was uh, neat being the first group to do that. And uh, certainly a lot of people, I think, still remember it. Um, Still have, again, a lot of great friendships from that team, and that was a special moment for us. And you were on the road in that first NCAA game, too. Yeah, we were down at uh, DePaul, uh, down in Indiana, and they had a really nice team and played really well on the road to get a win down there. And then uh, that was on Thursday night. Then we went to Wesleyan on uh, Saturday. It was the last game in Fred Young. Uh, so the place was uh, real lively and... Uh, Unfortunately, it didn't come out our way, but it was still uh, just a tremendous run and a uh, great experience for me, our team. So when your collegiate career was over, uh, what happens then to Vince Dorian? Well, I made a, a very interesting decision. I got into college coaching for my first two years, and I worked for uh, Jim Weitzel for one of those years down at Lewis University, which is a Division II school in our area. And... I didn't realize how hard coaches work. Uh, Jim was a, a workaholic, very similar to John. They have a lot of the same characteristics, and he was very likable, a great recruiter, and uh, had a, he was like a father to me. So I kind of followed him down there and had a tremendous experience uh, in seeing what coaching was all about uh, and all the time that's put in besides just, you know, when you're a player, you kind of feel like, you know, coach is here at practice, but I don't think you really realize I think Jim really stuck it to me, too. I think we worked like 60, <laughs> 70 hour weeks for, uh, it just seemed like the whole time we were down there. But he definitely taught me how to work and, and what it was really all about, uh, not just coaching on the floor, but the stuff away. And then uh, on to the high school ranks. Yes, I uh, went to De La Salle Institute on the south side, uh, 35th and Wabash, so we had a little Catholic League experience. Uh, uh, worked with a guy named Tony Rappold, who was a, uh, all the people that I was an assistant for, I really have the highest respect for and learned so much from all of them. I uh, went from De La Salle back to where I graduated from, Driscoll Catholic. Uh, coached there for four years. I was a head coach at 26, which was very young uh, and a great experience. And then I went to Revis High School uh, for three years and learned under Jim Tracy uh, and then became the head coach at Hinsdale South and now York. John, you mentioned that, you know, quote unquote, at the age of 23, you wind up getting invited to be a Division Three top assistant. Uh, what did you think when, when that phone call came? Well, you know, I actually, to be honest with you, I probably called Mark about 25 times to get that job. <laughs> but uh, no, I actually took the opposite path of Vince. I was a uh, high school coach for a couple of years right when I got out of Wesleyan and uh, down in Bloomington, Bloomington High School. And um, I just, I give a lot of credit to a guy like Vince. You know, I know the high school routine where you're teaching all day and then all the, at the three o'clock you have to summon the energy to come back right out, out to practice and get your guys going again. And um, to be honest with you, I said, you know, I really like this three to five time, but the, you know, the eight to three, I, I could really do the other stuff too, you know. So uh, I got, like I said, I got, I got a little lucky getting that uh, position with Mark. Um, and it was great for me because, like uh, Vince had said with Jim, Mark just said, you're the recruiting coordinator. Um, go out, get us some guys, and you'll screw up some, but just keep going. And uh, so... Uh, I just started driving around and we started trying to get players and got on the court and it was great. When did you both know, at, at what point in time, when did you both know you wanted to be coaches? For, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, well, for me, I was a math major at Wesleyan and I took that first math class and I realized that I was not going to be an accountant. <laughs> so, so, I, uh, so I became a... I, I got into the coaching side of things. I always kind of thought it was something I would enjoy doing. And I, and not only that, I thought I, humbly speaking, could be good at it. And so 
Um, you know, I think about my, my freshman, sophomore year of college, I really thought, okay, this is something I want to do. Yeah, I think the same, it's very similar. I, uh, it wasn't a test that turned me to it, though. I just really knew right away that um, through playing and loving the game, I wanted to coach, I wanted to be involved with it still. I just didn't know at what level if I wanted to stay in college or go down to high school. And fortunately, I've fallen in love with teaching, and it's uh, as big a part of my life as coaching. It's, you know, extremely important to me, and I feel very lucky and fortunate that I made the decision I did. What stands out in your your first games as coaches, in, 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 at any level, it doesn't matter. What's, what stands out in your, in your mind? John? Stands out, you know, I, I think for me at the college level, getting in there, you know, like Vince said, it's really true. As a player, you just kind of feel like your coaches just, you know, show up for practice and get you going and then they go home. You know, the I never realized all the scouting and film work and all the other things that we did to prep a team until I was there. And then when you're actually in there with the players and you're um, you're going through all that stuff in live action, your mind just kind of races a little bit, you know. And I think it it took me a couple of years to really uh, get to the point where you're coaching in a game and that stuff just comes easily to you. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that goes into coaching a college team, and I never, I never really, really got that until that first time that we just really got on the floor. Very, very similar response. I didn't understand the attention to detail that was put in by coaching staffs. Uh, Coach Weitzel was great at, and would drive me crazy. We would watch the same film probably five times, and we might show our players that a little segment for about two or three minutes, but we would we would spend hour after hour and never really realize the detail until you go through it and, and experience it um, at that level. So the biggest differences, and you're both gonna get to answer the question, the biggest differences between coaching college and coaching high school and talent is is not an option. So the biggest differences between coaching your respective teams John, I mean, um, the, the he, differences. Well, you know, there's a lot of differences. I, think I will say the, from the just, in high school, you've got a 16-year-old kid, although they're becoming young men, but, you know, and we're dealing with 20, 21-year-olds, and, and there's a big difference between those two, two areas. You know, for me, I think the, in high school, you're, you jumped from college, and then you, you're really, you're on your own. You know, I, sometimes it's funny, I look at a senior and I'm like, you know, in six months, you're either moving back home with your mom and dad or you you're you got a job, you're doing something. And so that's, we're the go-between there and that's that's a, a big jump. Um, I think with the recruiting side of things, you know, I think with Vince, uh, you kind of get the players and that's who you have and, and you kind of work with it and you do the best you can. Recruiting, you know, is a whole different ball game. Uh, we pick the players that we get, we, we go after them, and so we have a completely different relationship with our players than I think a high school coach does, only because of the recruiting piece. You know, by the time they actually put a uniform on for us, uh, we've met their grandma and grandpa, we've done a home visit, we know their girlfriend, we, all those things. So, you know, basketball is just a little piece of the whole process for us at that point. I yeah, think at that college level, you're living the game. You're constantly thinking about a recruit, constantly uh, on the road, maybe taking longer trips. You're you're just it, it takes over everything you're doing. At, at our level, there it's a little bit less intensive. It's still very intense, of course, but it's uh, it, it's definitely a different level of, of intensity. I think from the college game and the recruiting, like John had mentioned, is just. Uh, we don't we don't recruit. We coach kids in our district, and whoever we get, that kind of for, forces us to develop. Uh, we change philosophies. I mean, I don't have a uh, set philosophy. I'm not recruiting to a system uh, like John can do. Our, our system is actually unchanged this year because of our personnel is much different than last year. So I think you have to adapt a little bit more at the high school level because you can't go out and recruit to a system. The two of you have the connection of Elmhurst. Now, you're, you're both coaching in Elmhurst. 
you're a graduate of Elmhurst College, you're the coach at Elmhurst College, you played Elmhurst College, you played Illinois Wesleyan. A slight difference in, in, in eras and times, but at the same time that Elmhurst connection is, is kind of special. As I teased both of you before we went on air, uh, John's wearing blue now where he grew up with Illinois Wesley in green, and now you're wearing green, you grew up on the Elmhurst College blue. Did the two of you keep apprised of one another's efforts? Oh yeah, I, you know, Vince is, and I'm not just saying this because he's sitting next to me, really one of the best coaches in the area, at the Chicago Land area. I, I always love watching his teams play. They're great defensively. They play really hard. And, uh, you know, the, the thing, the high school level, um, you know, sometimes your talent dictates your wins and losses. And like Vince said, it's just who's in your district at the time. You know, you just have to do it. You can do some of your best coaching jobs and actually have a worse record than some other years, you know. And I think Vince has always had good teams. And I think, you know, that can show. But um, I never realized how much people hated Wesleyan until I actually came <laughs> to Elmhurst. And then, uh, and so now I know. And actually now I've kind of flipped it. So I'm kind of on that side now too. So I, uh, but it was interesting to me. I'm like, why does everybody hate me so much when I got here? <laughs> And I've got to keep the alums happy now, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, hate's a strong word. Probably <laughs> uh, an incredible amount of envy, I suspect, is, is, the, real, is the real case. It, it's, it's been fun to watch what John's done in such a quick time. I know he was at Elmhurst for a number of years as an assistant. It's been so great as an alum to see him come back, uh, be over 500 last year already. Uh, it, it's, it's exciting to watch, and I know that he's building and the recruits that he's brought in. Uh, I really feel like not only are they heading in the right direction, but they're, they're on the verge of doing something special. It's going to be fun to watch. What kind of challenges are presented in the, uh, and I'll start with you, John, challenges presented in, in the recruiting of a Division three athlete? Oh, well, Division three. you know, we don't offer the scholarships. And so uh, now there's, there's high school basketball, there's AAU club basketball. Um, these these players are playing year round, and mom and dad, uh, you know, the first thing that they're thinking in their minds is, you know, where are we going to get that scholarship? And so, you, you have to have a thick skin, I think, as a Division three coach, and you have to have a little. I said, a man with no pride has nothing to lose. You know, you just have to kind of go in and say, you know, we're a great school. You're a good student. Um, if you don't get that scholarship, like you're hoping to maybe Elmhurst is a place for you. And um, that takes a little bit of humbleness just to say, we might not be your first choice right off the bat. But as the recruiting process goes, I think they get to see the, the things Elmhurst has to offer, our coaching staff and the players we have, and it's a really high level of basketball at Division Three. I think they see that, and then as the process goes along, that's when they, they can come. As a solid high school athlete you were recruited and went to a division three school how did that decision process happen for you it, it, it was really not a tough decision once i went on elmhurst campus and, and like i said i think jim and jim weitzel who recruited me and john have so many similar qualities i just right away the basketball was a no-brainer for me and then once i set foot on the campus seeing uh, how beautiful it was, how nice the people were. I didn't want to go that far away from my mom, um, to be honest with you. And it, it was close to home. I had the benefits of being able to go home, and I stayed on campus. And it, it was the great, greatest experience that I kind of lucked into. I mean, I didn't really know what I was getting into, but, boy, I, I couldn't have made a better decision, and I'm so happy that I did. I had a tremendous experience and received a great education. We're going to go to break in just a minute, but I uh, want to reflect a little bit on you know, a, a national championship in your pedigree, uh, Hall of Fame career at, at Elmhurst College, and now great success uh, on the court for both of your programs. Uh, there, it has to be a wonderful feeling to have that kind of pedigree and success in both of your backgrounds. Uh, any one come to mind that you would 
simply say the biggest coaching influence? Oh, you know, I, I, I've had three coaches, I guess, in my life, really. Um, and my high school coach, Cal Hubbard, at UHI is a Hall of Fame high school coach. And Coach Bridges at Wesleyan won over 700 games. And, and Mark Shear really taught me everything I, need, I needed about the college game. I was really fortunate. I, I really had three really, you know, Mark is the all-time winningest coach in Elmhurst history. So I had three guys that um, really, for me, developed me as a coach. And I, f I laugh sometimes because I still say things that my high school coach and Coach Bridges 20 years later, I'm like, where did that come from? You know, but they, it still pops out every now and then. Yeah. Vince? Very similar. Again, Jim Weitzel was a tremendous influence. Scott Trost, who's now the head coach down at Lewis University, had a tremendous impact on my coaching career. And, and Jim Tracy, I spent uh, a number of years with him at Revis, uh, Hall of Fame IBCA coach that uh, I learned quite a bit from. And again, the, the difference in the level from college to high school. I think Jim taught me so much about the high school game and Scott and Jim uh, more about the college game. So. Well, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about your two teams going into this season and uh, how they look and maybe the conference races as well. This is Elmhurst Now. We're talking men's basketball in Elmhurst with John Baines of Elmhurst College and Vince Doran from the York High School Dukes. We'll be right back. The Elmhurst Historical Museum, located in downtown Elmhurst, is proud to present award-winning exhibits for visitors of all ages. Our adult tea time talk series, family programs, and special events make learning about history interesting and fun. Admission is free, and on-site parking is available. Visit the Elmhurst Historical Museum soon. Call us today, or go to our website for the latest program details. Welcome back to Elmhurst Now. We're with John Baines and Vince Doran, and we're talking about Elmhurst basketball. And I want to preview both the Elmhurst College Blue Jays and the York Dukes as we head into the 2014-2015 season. And Vince, I think we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, you mentioned in the first half of the program that as a high school coach, you uh, quote unquote, have to adapt and don't necessarily have a strict philosophy. Uh, you've had wild success your first two years at, at York. Uh, what's, this, what's this year look like for you? We've had a lot of really good players over the last two years and that certainly helps uh, as John could attest to or any coach will tell you. So it's been uh, wonderful to coach over there. I think this year we're going to have many new faces. Uh, we lost 10 seniors from, from last year's team that finished 25-6. and six. We tied a school record for number of wins in, in a season. Uh, again, a uh, great group of kids to coach, but a lot of new faces. We have uh, four seniors returning. Uh, Javon Thomas will certainly be, I don't think it's any secret, our best player, very talented uh, player. And then around him we have uh, two really great leaders, uh, Joe Parati, Luke Liebert, uh, who will we'll play uh, quite a few minutes for us this year and uh, great kids. And then Clayton Lyons is, is a senior that will return for us and certainly looking forward to him contributing as well. Uh, but a slew of juniors. Our juniors uh, as sophomores won the conference. Uh, they're a good group, but they're young. It's, it's hard to uh, come in. We're looking forward to the challenge of playing such a tough schedule with a young group. But uh, certainly had a great summer and looking, really looking forward to the season. 
And you mentioned the success of the junior varsity. Uh, that's been going on for a little while, though. That's not a surprise either. Yeah, York basketball has been very good for the last, we've won over 20 games the last four years uh, in a row, and that'll be a challenge to get there this year. But I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I know a lot of people think we're going to take a step back, but I'm, I'm not so convinced of that. I think we have real good uh, players, again, we're young, but they're, they're very competitive. We go at 6 a.m. in the mornings and uh, with open gym, and it, it's been going really well, and we had a pretty good summer. So uh, really looking forward to the season with these guys. But, yes, that lower-level success has kind of uh, continued. A big part of that is our Elmhurst Airborne program that starts at the fourth grade level and goes fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and, and that's key for any high school program is the feeder uh, and development levels, and that, that – Elmhurst is unbelievable with that. The program is, uh, has many kids involved and is a huge part of our success. There's probably nothing more important than the Airborne program for us. Now, how much of a, of a role do you have with them? Uh... We really work closely with the coaches. Uh, we see a lot of the kids at our camp over the summer. Uh, we will go out and watch games. They play most of their uh, home games uh, at York. And our 7th and 8th grade groups that we have coming are it's hard to get so excited about them, but the talent uh, right now and the talent at those two particular levels are uh, tremendous. And York basketball, uh, again, we, we're going to be young this year, but the future, and we have good young players in the program right now, the future looks very bright. The Western, Western Suburban Conference Silver, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, number one, who's in it, and then how does it look? Well, it's, it's one of the better leagues in the Chicagoland area. Uh, I think this year the, the favorite will be Hinsdale Central. Uh, who else is in it? Lyons Township, Oak Park are always good, Downers North. Uh, we know we're capable of losing to anyone and, and hopefully beating anybody. It's a very balanced league. Glenbard West is also in it, Proviso West. Uh, it's very competitive every night. Um, teams are well coached, and it's... Uh, very similar to CCIW. You feel like it's a slugfest every night, and uh, uh, the games usually are. The kids get real excited about it, and the conference is very tough. The Blue Jays, mm -hmm. two, uh, as Vince mentioned in the first half, uh, winning season, your first uh, year as, as head coach at uh, 14 and 11, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, what, does, uh, what does this season look like to you, John? Uh, I'm really very excited. You know, the, we've got two. We had two things coming for us. You know, last year coming in, we ended up playing uh, six sophomores and a freshman in our rotation. So, uh, pretty young for in our league. That usually doesn't happen. So we got a lot of good court time for some players. Um, going into the year, we have two things I think really going for us. Our recruiting class was very good uh, in terms of not just the young players, but we brought in three transfers, uh, uh, Mitch McLaughlin and Brandon Schwebke and Jalen Loving, um, all fine players. So we put some talent into the program. And then I was really, I wasn't surprised, but I was very happy how, how our returners came back from the summer. Um, you know, you, you really can't talk, nobody gets too excited about when you say, well, the players we had just got a lot better. And they said, well, you know, and I said, well, that's really the truth. And um, we have a lot of competition at positions. Um, it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing from a coaching standpoint. You know, I can't say this person's going to play this much. We, we really don't have our roles developed because we have nine new players and a lot of players got better. Um, but the practices, um, they're, gonna, they're good. College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin, one of the strongest Division I conferences, if not the strongest mm -hmm. uh, in the entire country. Uh, who's in it mm -hmm. and what's it look like? It's going to be competitive like it always is. You know, it's a step down a little bit. I say a step down. Uh, last year we had five teams that were in the top 25 at, at one point. And to give you an idea, there's 400 teams in the nation. So if you have five of your eight, um, that that's yeah. pretty stiff. Um, Augustana uh, will start the year in the top five in the nation, and Illinois Wesleyan uh, will probably start in the top 25. Uh, I think after that, it's really um, kind of wide open. Wheaton, I think, will be good again, but they lost uh, an All-American. Um, Carthage and North Central had a lot of graduation, 
and uh, Milliken and North Park uh, were towards the bottom of our league last year, but um, they're both teams that I laugh, you know, they, they come into the league 9-2, and 10-1, and one, and then they start league play, you know, so it'll be, I, I think for us, I, I think a good jump for us would be getting to, to be getting in that top half of the league, and uh, I think we can do that. Not directly germane to Elmhurst basketball, but Carroll College, mm -hmm. uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin, is coming back. They are. Not this season. No, 2016. Okay. So the, they'll be uh, coming back, which it creates a, it'll be interesting when they come back. It's, uh, we've always played our league January and February. Now with nine teams in the league, that pushes some games before Christmas. Um, it just gives us a whole different look than we've ever had. And, uh, but uh, it, it was a good addition for us. Vince, uh, York hosts a rather large tournament, as I recall. Uh, what, when does that take place? Yeah, the Jack Tosh uh, tournament this year will be December 26th, the 27th, 29th, 30th, and 31. Uh, we play the championship, third place game, and consolation championship on the 31st. Uh, I always tell people one of the best things about getting the York job was meeting Jack Tosh. Uh, what a wonderful person. and. Uh, became a great friend. I didn't get to know him, unfortunately, for that long of a, a period of time, but just uh, someone that was a basketball junkie that you could talk to and, and lean on, and I certainly uh, cherished my conversations with him. So we've put a lot of work into the tournament. It's 32 teams, uh, just like it was last year. Uh, we were second last year, lost in the championship game to Lake Forest, who was very good and went on to have a great season. Uh, it's going to be very competitive this year, and the field is even more competitive this year than it was last year. But I'm putting our, our whole staff is putting a ton of work into an administration and uh, making this one of the best tournaments in the state. And uh, we got a lot of calls for teams that want to get in, so we're uh, uh, very happy with the direction that it's headed and uh, have received a ton of support in running the tournament. When does your season actually start? Well, we started Thanksgiving. We have Thanksgiving tournament at Palatine. And then I don't know if you've seen the, the signs around town, though. We love Peyton. Uh, I have seen those. Uh, but for our audience. Yeah, Peyton uh, O'Brien is a six-year-old in our community that uh, is fighting uh, a battle with bone cancer. And through Relay for Life on December 13th in our game against Bennett, uh, we're running a pack to place with our girls program. Um, the game will start at 7.30 for the boys' varsity, 6 o'clock for the girls. And uh, there's a lot of uh, overwhelming support. I think we all know how generous the Elmhurst community is, but that's the biggest game and event on our schedule is, again, December 13th. Um, certainly encourage everybody to come out if they can. The story with Peyton is, uh, again, six years old. He has a younger sister, Briley, who's five, and Avery, who's four. And then Peyton's two older brothers are playing our program. Bennett's a sophomore, uh, and Walker is a junior. Uh, great kids, great family. Their father is Brian O'Brien. His wife is Laura. And their grand, Peyton's grandfather is actually an amputee as well. And Peyton is going to be getting a prosthetic uh, very soon here. And uh, I was talking to Brian. Brian went out golfing with them. He said it was uh, an interesting experience going golfing with uh, two people that have one leg. And he, I said, well, did you win? And he said, no, my dad always beats me. So <laughs> there's a heck of a relationship between Peyton and his grandfather. And uh, Mrs. Sullivan has always done the relay for life for us. She's put a, always, we don't do anything. She does everything for that. But we're really going to uh, help her this year and making it a special event for Peyton. And uh, looking forward to really working with him. He's going to be a manager for our team when he can. Uh, he goes to Hawthorne here in Elmhurst, and we're looking for all the Hawthorne people to come out and join us that night, and hopefully a ton of people from the community will come out and support our Relay for Life event. All the proceeds go uh, to the American Cancer Society, and uh, the We Love Peyton signs are awesome, and we're just looking, our mission for the night is to, to make it a very special event and lift Peyton's spirits as best we can. John, when's your season start? Uh, we start November 15th. Uh, we actually host a classic with Milliken, who's in our conference. Uh, Westminster and Greenville from Missouri uh, are coming up, so we'll be playing Saturday and uh, Sunday that weekend. And uh, we host everyone. Um, and the women also play then, so we have eight teams all playing on Saturday and Sunday. And then uh, we start our non-conference uh, from there. 
Uh, a West Coast swing this year, or no? Actually, we're not. We're, we're taking the uh, the long trip to St. Louis is our ah. big trip. Uh, we actually in May uh, are taking a trip to Greece, um, so uh, it'll be a great trip for our players. Uh, I was fortunate enough this past summer. I was hired to run uh, three weeks of camp in Greece, uh, shooting camp, and uh, so I spent some time there, um, and then. From some contacts there, we, we've been able to get with a, a former Greek national coach and one that runs a club team. And uh, so we're going to get some games uh, right after finals. We take finals on Friday and Sunday we had a, have a 10-day trip. So uh, to pay for that trip, we uh, kind of dialed it down a little bit for the regular season. But I'm sure it's going to be very warm in St. Louis. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's always warm in St. Louis. Uh, I want to talk, uh, switch gears just for a second, but I warned you I was going to do this. Uh, the girls' programs at York, uh, Vince, uh, strong programs as well? Very good. Uh, expected to have a great season this year. I always, uh, Jessica Bianchi is our little point guard. I always say she plays harder than anyone. Boys' program, girls' program, she's fun to watch. Um, they have a bunch of players coming back. I'd hate to miss any of them. Uh, they're very good. They're expected to, to do really well this season and certainly looking forward to seeing uh, a number of their games again. And uh, we're doing, a, again, a pack the place where we both play together on December 13th. So that should be uh, a lot of fun playing the same night as them. And John, the Lady Blue Jays? Um, I think they'll be very good. Tiffany uh, Carrillo is the head coach and you know talking with her you know I said okay no one's in the room now let you tell me tell me how you're going <laughs> to so be. So now you're going to yeah, tell yeah, all yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell me how you're going to be but she really feels like this is the year that they can really break through you know they, they've had the last couple of years uh, talented teams that she's had an injury to some key players here and there and you know, you never want to make excuses, and she wouldn't, but I, I think that plays a big deal whenever your best player goes down, that sort of thing. So um, I think this, if she's healthy, I think uh, their team will be very good. How do fans get the update and schedules and information throughout the season that they might want for both of your programs? Our York Athletics site has our schedules up through Athletics 2000. And we also have our athletic department has a Twitter account that is updated pretty regularly, even during our games. So it's a convenient way for people to follow us. Uh, same thing with us, ElmhurstBlueJays.com. Uh, we'll have our games. You can always sign up to get text messages with all our game scores uh, through your phone. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at John Baines, uh, at Baines underscore John. Um, so there's your plug. And, uh, and, uh, um, it, you can always get everything from there. What, what, what would you say to a high school athlete who's trying to get better? What's the most important thing to do? Uh, commitment and hard work. I mean, we just had uh, two kids that are playing major division one basketball, David Cohn and Frankie Tui, that uh, maybe what separated them not from everyone, because everyone can put that work ethic together, but the amount of time that they put into their establishing and polishing their game um, to play at the level that they played at. Frankie just outworked people. Uh, wasn't the best athlete, but he's just a bruiser in his commitment. So I would say commitment, and dedication. Both of those players are special players at our level, and I believe they'll both be special at the next level because of their commitment and work ethic. Uh, David's at Colorado State. David yeah. transferred from Colorado State, and now he's at William & Mary. Ah, okay. uh, so he'll be sitting out this year, but still has three years of eligibility. And Frankie's at the Air Force Academy. Uh, it certainly takes a special person to go to the academy. He considered all of them and, and wound up, uh, he's very happy about his decision. Uh, talked to him last week, and it's, uh, it's a special lifestyle that, that I think he relishes and uh, not many people would, but he's just that type of person and uh, just a great, great person and uh, proud to say that we coached him and, and wish both those guys and all of our players uh, the best of luck. We also have uh, two other players that I want to mention. Charlie Rose uh, has walked on at the University of Iowa and 
Uh, Stanley Roberts is playing out at Kishwaukee, and, and Justin Crash from two years ago is playing out at uh, JUCO in Kansas. So start recruiting those two <laughs> JUCO kids now because they'll be good ones. What do you tell your young players? What do they have to do to get better? You know, I always, I always feel like whenever guys come from high school, uh, they always feel like, okay, well, I'm 18, I'm 19 years old, and now, now I'm done getting better. I'm done learning. You know, and I think uh, you can you can change your game. To you know, it's, I've seen so many freshmen that come in, and their game is completely different than when as a junior than they were as a freshman. Um, you just have to put the time in. I, I, I agree with Vince. It's uh, I think at our level we're able to to coach them. You know, in a lot of you know other times we have full time coaches. You know that we're not um, teaching in classrooms, so we can work with them at those, those times. So uh, if a guy's willing to come in and get shots up and and go to the weight room and do all the things, uh, you put the time in. I think you can make it. Well, two successful coaches, two successful programs, both in the same town. So if you're watching this program, my advice to the basketball fan is get out to both. Uh, and uh, you don't play on the same nights very often, I know, so it's, it's uh, an available opportunity. Thank you both for joining me. I appreciate it, and, and good luck on your seasons. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Ken. You've been watching Elmhurst Now, and we're very delighted that you have been. We look forward to you doing more in the future, and we'll see you again. There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. The Churchville Schoolhouse opens the door to the best education in history. Visitors to the Churchville Schoolhouse take a step back in time to watch history unfold in a restored National Register of Historic Places property that dates to the Civil War era. Students of today walk in the footsteps of local farm children from the early days of DuPage County for an authentic living history experience led by a schoolmarm of the early 1900s. A visit to the Churchville Schoolhouse is hands-on, educational, and fun. Participants use slate chalkboards and McGuffey readers for the day's lessons. And children will be asked to follow proper classroom etiquette. Reading, writing, and arithmetic are practiced, and students test their skills during an old-fashioned spelling bee. And of course, no school day is complete without recess featuring games of the early 1900s. The schoolhouse is a popular place for scouts and day camps, too. Group visits can also be arranged for service clubs, tour groups, and other adult organizations. The Churchville Schoolhouse Living History Program is operated by the Elmhurst Historical Museum. Call the museum today to book a field trip or find out more information. Call 630-833-1457 or visit our website at churchvilleschoolhouse.org. The Churchville Schoolhouse is waiting to open the doors for your school or community group. 
Plan a memorable learning experience today for the best education in history.